Okay, so now I will talk about Saturn and Venus conjunct. And when this happens, Venus is Venus is starved by Saturn, but it's a little bit more complicated because there is also when Venus is with Saturn, from Saturn's standpoint, Saturn is being delighted. Saturn is being helped by Venus's friend, but then Venus is actually being hurt when Venus is with Saturn. And <clears throat> you'll notice with when you learn about the friendships of planets that they're not always a two-way street. And in life, that's actually the case, though, as well. Like, I've had people that I thought were really good friends, and they ended up being not that great of friends. They didn't like me the way that I like them, you know what I mean? Or, or other people can be like that towards me. And so... Again, like life is very, very complicated and human psychology is really complex. And so the Lajitati Avashtas, that's why they're complex, you know, and that's why you'll see a lot of different Avashtas going on and what they can't all be right. Oh, is astrology broken? No, just look at the average person. The average person is looks like they're broken a lot of the times and they're a mess because one day they're an angry person. The next day they're a sad person. The next day they're trying to control everything. The next day they're hopelessly idealistic or whatever it is. But um, I'm just getting at like the fact that if you talk to me when I was 16 years old and when I was 26 and when I'm 36, I might have different attitudes about how I feel about things. That's life. <clears throat> so you look at the dashas, the transits, the things, and the avashas that are running, and that's going to say how I felt when I was 16, when I was 26, and when I'm 36. So that's kind of what we're doing, you know what I mean, with Vedic astrology and with these lajitati avashas. <clears throat> I'll make other videos on these, but just so you guys know, like the three, one of the three toughest conjunctions you can have in astro all of astrology, and even those that don't know about the Lajitati of Ashes will agree, the three worst ones are Mars-Saturn conjunct, Sun-Saturn conjunct, and Moon-Saturn conjunct. Because in that case, both planets are hurting both people. You know what I mean? Both planets are hurting each other. Um, then there are going to be other situations and other of Ashes you find where both are friends and are mutually helping each other, like Mercury and Venus conjunct. That's a really nice Sevastian, and it's common. Um, so there are situations that are a clear, open, two-way street sort of thing when it comes to life and when it comes to astrology, but they're not always that case, and there's just all this wide spectrum of things. And then again, this is another thing I want to add is that From everything we're working with, from these avashtas, this is how you can see how happy and how fulfilled one will be. And there's subjective inner fulfillment. And these are parashara techniques. <clears throat> and the parashara, Brihat Prashara, the techniques in there, you know, he talks about the dot, like Vimshatari Dasha to use. That's a nakshatra based timing system. So the that that system of that is given in Brihat Prashara Horashastra is very much more what we might say is a subjective or lunar sort of system of techniques. And the lunar side of life is the side of life that deals with how you're fulfilled, how happy you are, how inwardly you're going. Um, subjectively, how are you doing? Are you, are you content? Not this or that. Ernst, Ernst Wilhelm, my teacher, is like the main person who really made this clear to me, and I just I just love this perspective, and I've seen it to be incredibly true and useful, and I just don't see a lot of other really clear systems that explain this, so this is what I will share with you, but I've been talking about this for a long time, so you might have already heard me say this, if so, forgive me, but like I even said this on my first talk with KRS um, back in 2016, but basically, um, Jaimini system, as Ernst... Uh, has taught it is my in my opinion really the best for like objective predictions um as in the sense of like will you marry okay yes or no or will you you know renounce the world that system is what i would use for that and that emphasizes signs and rashis actually quite a lot and rashis in my opinion are a solar thing 
You know what I mean? And the the timing system that Jaimini uses is a is a solar based sign based timing system. So everything is based on Rashi's. And remember, Rashi's are the like the bodies, the objective limbs of Vishnu, as they're said, the limbs of Janardana um, in the old text. And so the whole Jaimini system is solar and is sign based and is objective. The whole Parashara system is overall much more nakshatra based, much more lunar based, lunar timing systems, nakshatra timing system, and is therefore more subjective. So that's why we can see how we subjectively feel about things through the Parashara system. And this is why we can see more what's externally, what's really going to happen in a concrete sense with the Jaimini system. Okay, so I hope that that kind of gives you guys just more of an understanding of Avastya's overall. Um, now, when it comes to this placement, Venus, star by Saturn, um, when Venus is conjunct Saturn, um, it still is going to be delighted by Saturn. So the things I said in the previous video can still be true if Saturn is... Uh, if, if Venus has a really high auspiciousness to it, like it has really high Shadbala, it has really high uh, strong yogas connected to it, um, it's, you know, and it's in high dignity in other good Lajitadi Avashas. And if Saturn is also in a good dignity and having good things to it, then you won't see as much of this starvation. You'll see more of the um, <clears throat> delight that I mentioned in the previous video. But uh, a lot of the times this is going to be the case. You will see these qualities happening, <clears throat> but just, you know, 25% of the time you might not see that. Um, most of the time, though, you're going to basically notice a general theme of when Venus is starred by Saturn and conjunct Saturn, it is the person isn't very aware of like their self-worth and they tend to have doubt and a lot of lack and just difficult situations with their sense of self-worth and their ability to appraise and evaluate things. And they have a lack of self-esteem or self-worth somewhere and or an issue with that, with their confidence. And so they go about relationships really evaluating them in kind of a skewed way where they may not even see it as being that skewed. Um, but it kind of is if you look at it from an outside perspective. Um, and to reiterate, only this only happens when Venus is conjunct Saturn, and it doesn't. It's just any times in the same sign as Saturn. It can be at one degree, and then Saturn could be at twenty nine degrees, and that's still happening. Um, remember though, when it's aspected far away or opposite or this or that, that's not. This isn't happening. It's not being starved. Um, okay, so. Like I know one person who had this and I asked them just really briefly, like within interacting over the internet or something within a few minutes, they had a Venus Saturn conjunction in their seventh house and some other difficult avastas. And I was like, um, yeah, it's, you know, I don't know. Would you say that you probably had some difficulties with like choosing good partners, you know, and choosing partners who are really going to support you and make you feel fulfilled versus um, feeling versus choosing people who are like a lot worse for you and a lot bad and are not good for you, but maybe not realizing it or not really realizing that you deserve a better partner, you know? And so people um, can get into the, involved in that or they, it, but if you have this again, all you need to know is that you just have to do what you need to do to improve your self-worth. And obviously if you're watching this, probably you're involved in yoga. So incredibly a good thing to do for you is yoga, you know, do lots of yoga, yogasana, you know, and make sure to be meditating a lot. Meditations that help improve your self-worth. You can do Venus mantras, Saturn mantras, all kinds of things to work on this. Um, and it's something that you will want to work on because it probably won't just go away on its own. I mean, it will get better with old age, as all Saturn issues do, but you, you, you don't want to just ignore it and hope for it to get better on its own. Um, and this can actually be a placement for like indulging in low desires, you know, because Saturn is sort of your lowest side of yourself. So when Venus is there, one can, you know, get more involved in vices like drinking or drugs or, you know, just like more unhealthy uh, sexual behaviors or more unhealthy indulgences. Um, and, you know, they could get caught up into like 
just really unhealthy relationships. They could be abusive, they could be ones that just don't support them, where they're just losing out more than they're gaining a lot of the time. Um, you know, it's kind of like uh, your sense of what you can give is not almost the same worth as what they can give. So it's just confusing and there's a lot more doubt around relationships overall. Um, another way you can look at it sort of is that Saturn is kind of like our your toughest, th your tough things you really got to work on, you know, and your com where your complexes are and where you're going to have to kind of like accept and make peace with at times, just not being good enough. And so when it's with Venus, that's how you enjoy life. And so the person kind of has to accept on some level that in this life, it's not the life of full enjoyment of luxury and of planet Earth and things. It's just not that kind of life for this person. Um, and they have to kind of just accept that, okay, they've sort of caught up to like your negative um, fate for Venus in this life when you have Saturn and Venus conjunct kind of, you know what I mean? Um, likewise, if the opposite's Jupiter, so then when the planet is with Jupiter, like Venus is conjunct Jupiter, that's like I said in a previous video placement that makes you have sex with lots of partners or like get just you're just kind of like uh, getting way too much Venus, you know what I mean? And it almost confuses you and it's not good. And it's actually, you know, because it starves Jupiter. I made a whole video about that. Um, so this is sort of the opposite end. Um, but like I said, with other Vashas, this isn't a deal breaker. And I know many people who've been in great relationships <clears throat> that have had this. <clears throat> so again, from the objective standpoint, you can still get married and still be happy. But then subjectively, there's probably some element that's like, just tougher, more of a burden, you know what I mean? Like your your partner is more of a burden on you or there's just some burden that comes in with the relationship. If you're from the standpoint of Saturn though, when Saturn is conjunct Venus, this really helps Saturn and helps Saturn feel less miserable and feel more meaning in life. So what's fascinating is like, I know a chart of one person who has, who's ruled by Saturn and has that Venus um, delighting them in the 12th house and so they are kind of like, they're a monk, you know, and they're, they're, they're really happy with kind of like renouncing these desires, you know what I mean, um, of Venus. And that kind of delights them in the 12th house of ashrams. Um, and th so this person has gotten caught up with relationships and been confused and not really been, not had great fulfillment, you could say no, but from his perspective, that placement and everything just suits his path in this life to be more of a monk, you know what I mean? And to be not involved in all these Venusian pursuits and getting married and all this stuff. So, um, then I know another person who's born like within a week of that person, or maybe even less than a week, has the exact same chart almost, but this person has they're a Libra and they're, they, so they're ruled by Venus and they have that Saturn Venus conjunction in their third house. And they are being ruled by Venus and having that starvation of Saturn, they've suffered like abusive partners. You know what I mean? They were kind of had situations of dealing with sexual abuse at a young age, like in their, you know, high school age. And that has kind of affected all their relationships ever since. You know what I mean? And it, it's been hard for them to, to, to have healthy relationships ever since, you know what I mean? And that's a classic Saturn-Venus thing that I'm talking about, you know what I mean? But that person was ruled by Venus, and so that's like them, you know, the Venus, the, the hurt, the starvation, and the effect, the trauma, Saturn is trauma, and that starving their Venus affecting them means they themselves are going to feel this. But you might have another client come to your chart, come to your office, who they're the Saturn person, so they don't necessarily, this is a part of their life, but it doesn't directly hurt them in the same way. It might help them somehow. You know what I mean? Um, so it's really, really fascinating how these avashtas work. Or it could be something where it's a really, really nasty Saturn. I'm just picturing this now. I haven't had a client like this, but I could picture a really, really ugly Saturn situation, like maybe they're an Aquarius and their Saturn's in the seventh house and it's with Venus and they're just like a really abusive person. See, they're abusing the other person and you would have to tell them that, you know what I mean? Or tell them like, what are you doing in your relationships? You know what I mean? Are you sure you're being fair? Are you sure you're being a good partner and all these things? Um, so it's it's really, really fascinating how, uh, how these avashas work. <laughs>
You know what I mean? Um, and they require a lot of subtlety and it takes years to get them good. Um, I've known these and I've practiced them since 2012. Um, haven't, you know, formally taught them or made videos until now. You know what I mean? Which, yeah, I probably could have a lot sooner, but um, I'm just saying take your time with these things. You know what I mean? And they're a lifelong study. So, uh, so just to say a few more words about Saturn Delighted by <clears throat> Venus from his perspective, it's like kind of a, and again, this is much easier when it's just Saturn in the sign of Taurus or whatever, and I'll do other videos on this, but basically when the Saturn Venus conjunction is happening, that's also occurring. And so in that case, you might get, you might notice this is like, um, well, Saturn Delighted by Venus means that like one will doesn't need the partner to, you know, be rich. They can date a poor partner, but it's really true love, you know? So it's like they just evaluate their decisions, their complexes and their psychology of Saturn is helped by this healthy evaluation of Venus, you know? Um, but <clears throat> when they're both conjunct, you don't see that as much. It's kind of a battle. That's what you want to get. So if you have that conjunction, you want to learn about what it means when Saturn is delighted by Venus and Venus is delighted by Saturn and just develop those qualities on your own and just train yourself to have those qualities. <clears throat> <clears throat> or if you already have them, then good job in your past lives. You worked hard to develop that. Okay. Um, thanks, you guys. I hope this makes sense. More videos, you know, on the way. Seems that Venus retrograde is making me compelled to talk about Venuses of Ashes. So <clears throat> I'll try to finish all of them. Okay, bye.